peace in a place where I have full determination that I'm making sure that no matter what, this is going to happen. Okay? No matter what, this is going to happen. I have a, a space of determination, right? And I have to understand that I have to fight past my current condition. All right? I literally, if I'm going to manifest a limitless possibility, I have to be willing to fight past the limitation. So that means I have to put myself in a space to fight. Somebody say fight. fight. If you're watching us live, say fight. you you got to understand that there is something that I have to fight for to get to the other side. Okay? There's something that's, gonna, that's going to, amen, challenge me. And there will always be limits and lines. But guess what? If I'm fighting, I can break those limits. If I'm in a space to fight, I can break those limits. I can break those places, right? There will always be temptation to remain where I am. Hear me. There will always be temptation to remain in the same space, the same cycle, the same uh, a lifestyle, the same st uh, a level that I have been on for so long. There has always been space and time. But the Spirit of the Lord said you've got to understand that even though temptation comes, you've got to fight against it. How many hear me today? So fighting is so key because if you don't fight, amen, then you'll remain in the same space. All right? There will always be people around you who don't want you to accelerate. Okay? There will always be people around you who say, it's okay. You don't have to want more. You don't have to search for more. You don't have to believe for more. You know, life is okay. You know, just do what you've been doing. There will always be people around you who will allow you to accept the place of comfortability or struggle or where you are in life. How many hear me? There will always be people around you who could say, why do you have to believe for that? There will always be people around you who don't get it. Hear me. There will always be people around you who don't get it. I remember, amen, when the Spirit of the Lord began to put in my spirit about having a helicopter. There's people who don't get it. I'm not worried about them getting it. I believe. Come on. And he didn't ask for other people to believe. He asked for you to believe. How many hear me? So you got to understand there will always be people around you who do not get where you're going. And you have to be comfortable with the space that people don't understand where you're going. Hear me today. There will always be people, right, who don't understand who will what? Try to block your progress. Hear me. People around you, they'll say, well, why are you doing that? You shouldn't do this. Complainers. They will look at you and say, I don't understand why you're doing what you're doing, right? But you've got to understand the purpose of what God has called us to. We're going to Colossians 2 on today. Colossians chapter 2. And I want to share with you briefly because I believe that the word of the Lord will bless you and it will help you. Colossians chapter 2. We're going to go to verse uh, 5, 6 rather. We could do five. We can go back one. Colossians 2 verse 5. It says, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Look at this. It says, though I be what? Absent in what? The flesh, right? He said, I'm with you in spirit. So the Holy Spirit is there to what? Minister to you, okay? He's there to be able to what? Pour out into you. He's there to be able to release, right? Miracle signs and wonders, manifestation. He said, I'm with you in spirit, joining and beholding your what? Order. How many know you got to have order? He says, and what? The steadfastness of your faith, okay? So that means you got to be in a space where what? Your faith is what? Locked in so that the fulfillment of what God wants to birth can what? Manifest. How many hear me today? So he says he's trying to put us in a proper alignment in a proper space. Look at this. Go to verse 6. Now, I want, this is where I really want to talk about today. It says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. All right? We have received who? Christ Jesus. We receive Christ Jesus the Lord. Then it says, so walk ye in him. Now, this is, the, this is the space I want you to get in. When we receive Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we connect with Christ, he says that he wants us to what? 
walk in him. Now, when he's talking about walking in him, he's not just talking about walking in our space of salvation, but he's talking about walking in a place of inheritance. Anytime we are in a space or a place where God is saying that he has adopted us as his children, right, and we're affected because of our adoption. Hear me. So because I have received Christ, I'm affected because of my adoption, which causes me now to what? Walk under his authority. Walk under his rule and walk under his avenue, okay? Now, in this space, we got to understand. So I have to now ask myself, how do I walk in Christ? Because in order to walk with Christ, that means I have to what? Take upon the DNA of Christ and I have to let go the DNA of the flesh. I have to take upon the DNA of Christ. So in order to do that, I have to understand Christ in his royalty. Hear me. I have to understand Christ in his deity. I have to understand Christ in another realm or measure that I have not understood him in beyond salvation. Do you hear me? Because if I only walk with him according to salvation, I'm going to be limited to receive the full portion of who he is. Do you hear me? So I don't need to just receive him for salvation and that that's only the thing I need to receive him for, but I need to receive him in every aspect of his life. So I need to learn his characteristics. I need to learn his functioning. I need to learn how he operates. So if somebody adopts somebody into a family, right, they're going to have a certain mind or a certain way that they will function because of how they may have been groomed or how their, their bloodline or who they come from um, is, is, is in them. But then when I am adopted, now I have to walk in him, which means I have to be transitioned into a different mind. Do you hear me today? I have to be transitioned into a different life, a different thought pattern. I have to be transitioned to believe now to walk in him under the authority of the name that has been given, right? People say I'm a Christian or I'm a saint, right? So that means if I really identify myself with him, then that means there's there's a space that I begin to walk and function in a, a place that I have no longer operate or have not operated in in times past. How many with me? So I want you to see this. He says, so you must what? Walk ye what? In him. Not in myself. Not in my own ability. But my walking has to be in the capacity to function now in the space where God can thrust me so that I what? Not operate under his deity. I'm now operating under who he is. So I don't walk in my ability. I walk in the ability through him. Hear me. So I have to, I have to come into an understanding of who I'm really connected to. If I don't understand who I'm really connected to, then I will function in the same capacity that I have functioned in in times past because I will be connected to Christ but not walking in him. There is a difference. So I can be connected to somebody but not walk in. You hear what I'm saying? There is a difference. So he says walk in him. That means I have to now take upon the deity. That's why he said we are joint heirs. Hear me. We are joint heirs. We're connected in Christ to function in a capacity that he said, I'm giving you the same rights, the same authority, the same power, the same unctioning that I have. Matter of fact, the word even says that you will do greater. Hear me. So how can I do greater? It's only if I'm able to walk in him. See, I can never do greater unless I access the full measure of what has been given. Do you hear me today? So I have to come into agreement of who God has called me to be. And I have to come into agreement to receive Christ. Come on. Not just say I accept him as my Lord and Savior. But I have to receive him in the likeness of who he was. I have to receive him in the likeness of how he operates. I have to receive him in the different dimension to unlock my mind, to free me in a space, to function in the capacity that he has called. Hear me. So I have to now open myself up. And I have to revisit areas where I have blocked Christ from walking in me. I had to open my mind to revisit spaces where I have not allowed him to function in me. Hear me. When I didn't have the ability to lift my arm, I said, okay, how does this operate in you? Because there's no limitation in Christ. There's no restriction in Christ. So if there is no restriction, I have to now tap into who he is in a particular area so that the restriction can break off. How many hear me today? So walking in him is now what? Taking upon 
the character, taking upon the DNA, taking upon what? The thing that shifts my mind to what? Operate under his character. Operate under his authority. Operate under his deity and function in his likeness. How many hear me today? Go to the next verse. Very important. He says you got to receive me and you got to walk in me. So what do I have to fight to do? He says this. You got to be rooted and what? Built up in him. Okay? He says you have to be rooted. Now the problem is if I'm not willing to put in the effort, then guess what? It's going to be hard to have a root. See, he says you got to be rooted. That means you got to what? Something has to be planted in you. And how many know when something is planted, it has the capacity to come up? Yeah. It has the capacity to come up if it's not placed deep enough. That's why even after you plant something, the ground is tilled to make sure that what? It goes deep enough in the ground so that it can produce something. So it says not only do I have to walk in him, but I got to become rooted. Mm -hmm. That means I got to take away everything that will stop from being limitless. I have to take away every mindset that is around me that will hinder me from functioning in a place of limitless. I have to go back and research what did Jesus do when there were obstacles? What did Jesus do when there was something that would restrict him? Jesus would never look at the situation. He looked at the solution. Hear me. He never looked. He said, okay, listen, okay, you got 5,000 people and he said, oh, what do we need to do? We need to feed them. Look what he was saying. He was rooted. So his disciples, he was teaching them how to become rooted. Look for the solution, not the problem. The problem was 5,000 people need to be fed. Yes. The solution was one boy that had a basket. Do you hear me? But the only reason he was able to see the solution because he wasn't looking at the problem. We are conditioned to look at problems and we're not conditioned to look for solutions. So Jesus sees out of the opposite eyes of his disciples. So he trains them and he tells them, I'm trying to get you in a position so that you can fulfill a space so that you can fight to look at what you cannot see. Come on, apostle. He told him, you see 5,000 people. I just need one person. He said, go look in the crowd. Somebody got something. You will see 5,000 people without, but I see if I can just get one person that got something, they'll bring a solution. You got to be rooted to see beyond what you see. It takes a root to see that. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? The root has to transition you into a space that he was able to see. He said, okay, he said, I'm trying to root you. I'm trying to change how you see a thing that can transition you. So he said, don't look at the people. I need you to look at the solution. Hear me. So we look at the obstacle. What is the obstacle? The pain? What is the obstacle? The limitation of something that I can't see happening right now. What is the obstacle? That means you got to look for the root. Forget the symptom. Look for the root. Y'all hear me? He transitioned his viewpoint. He told him, he said, listen. He said, I want you to understand. He said, listen, you got to be rooted and you got to be what? Built up. Wow. He tells them something that seems, so it seems like it's kind of, you know, uh, 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 impossible at the moment. Why? Because he's saying, you looking at 5,000 people, they're looking at Jesus like, what in the world is going on? There's no how this is going to happen. He said, no, you got to be built up in me. That's why he said, walk, go walk in the crowd, go walk amongst them, find somebody. They came back and said, oh, well, we only found a little boy with this. See, they were getting ready to tell him it is impossible. Ooh. But he was saying, I'm about to break a limitation in you. You don't understand. You got to walk in me. I'm not walking in you. You got to walk in me. Y'all hear the difference? So if we want Christ to walk in us, we bring limitations. But when we walk in him, we break limitations. Do you hear me today? It'll transition how you see because what? You become rooted and you become built up. So he told them, bring it to me. Let me bless it. Let me break it. Bring it to me. Why? Because I want you to be in position so that you can be built up. Glory. He was preparing to build them. He was preparing to get them in position. He was preparing to launch them into another space for the fulfillment to come to pass. Hear me. Hear me. He says, I want you to see something. So they're looking. Now, how in the world, if we are limited with one basket, think about this, we are limited with one basket, 5,000 people, we're limited with one basket, and now he starts breaking. 
you see the fish in two loaves as what is impossible. But I'm telling you, just put something in my hand. He said, if you walk it in me, put it in my hand, and something has to break open, and limitations have to break free. Y'all hear me today? He said, just give it to me. Why? Not what you have the ability to do, be rooted and built up. Do you hear me? So the building process is not based on you. It's based on your ability to see beyond, amen, where you are. You got to transition yourself. Yes. Whoo. You got to transition yourself to a space of belief. Somebody say, I got to believe. I got to believe. See, so I can say I'm built up, but how do I really know I'm built up is because what? I'm established in faith. See, when I really become built up, then guess what? I have to now transition myself, and I'm sure they were looking like, how is this possible that you going to feed all these people with this little bit? Mm. See, it had to be done in faith. Do you hear me? Every time you break off something, you say, this ain't all I have. Every time you do something, you got to say, this ain't it. Why? Because I'm moving in faith. It's not I'm not the end. You got to always see yourself as at the beginning that it is never running out, never running dry, never stopping. Do you hear me? That it's going to what? Cease to a certain point and it's going to begin again. Glory. Do you hear me? Jesus never looked at what was around he looked at the possibilities. Do you hear me? In every situation, he always looked at the possibilities. You got to study who you're walking in. Mm. See? Because if I'm not studying who I'm walking in, it's hard for me to be built up in him. See, if I'm not studying the life of Christ, then it's going to be hard to walk in Christ. It's going to be difficult. I'm not talking about salvation now. I'm talking about walking in a manifestation that breeds faith, that pushes me in another dimension, that changes my language. That's why Jesus never addressed whenever there was a problem. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Even when there was something that was happening to the point where even when they were on the boat and winds and waves and all kind of stuff was happening, Jesus woke up and said, sea storm. He, he wasn't even, he said, this don't mean nothing. Why are y'all afraid of something when you have me here? Y'all, catch this today. Be established in faith means that you literally come to a place of overriding your mental capacity that will tell you you cannot do a thing. Do you hear me? You got to fight. That's why I say you got to fight. Somebody say I got to fight. You got to fight because I'm sure the disciples were saying it is impossible for this thing to manifest. There is no way possible based on what they see, based on what they feel, based on the operation of what's around them. It is no way possible. They had to fight to obey the instruction that was given. Can I tell you you got to fight? You have to fight to obey the instruction. So they were saying, okay, we walking through the crowd, but don't nobody have no food. But we did find a little boy. Come on, somebody. We did. Well, here go a little boy. But in the midst of them finding that little boy, they didn't understand their obedience to the instruction that was given. Go find me something. Come on, somebody. They had to fight because their mind was saying, even though we found this, there is still a limitation. Can I tell you, it's how you view. It's how you see it. It's how you look at a thing. It's how you operate in a space. So everything that you see, you can see it out of the wrong eyes. You can see it from the opposite space. You can see it as what? It's something that is what? Going to hinder you or not be able to help you. But if you see every little thing in a positive way, it can transition you into a space now where you step into a place where the element of faith begins to operate. Because faith only operates where it's pushed. Hear me. Faith only operates where it's pushed. If there's no pushing, there's no manifestation. Right, right. You can believe all day, but after the believing, you got to push something yeah. out to the agreement of what you say. That's why being rooted and built up is so important. Right. You got to keep speaking. See, you got to keep speaking. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. You got to keep speaking it until something happens. Do you hear me? I'm walking in him. 
I'm walking, and because I'm walking in him, it's breaking off a border. Because I'm walking in him, it's breaking off a limitation. I'm walking in him, and it's breaking off. Do you hear me? So your ability to believe, your ability to receive a thing, your ability to awaken yourself, you got to continue to speak it, not once here or there. You got to speak it multiple times, all the time, throughout the day, until your countenance comes in agreement. Come on. Until your mind comes in agreement. Until your will comes in agreement. Until your walk comes in agreement until your talking comes in agreement until everything you do comes in agreement with the manifestation it don't matter about other people I told you the other week he didn't ask other people to believe he asked you to believe so if you keep speaking it it's got to come to pass why because you start believing it after a while see at first you might say well I believe such and such but you don't really believe it See, but if you keep speaking something, it gets in your system, which creates a pain for you to walk in it. And the operation of the thing begins to manifest now. Why? And it transitions you into a place so that now what you have spoken, you begin to believe. And when you believe it, then the operation takes you in that direction. It magnetizes you. Do you hear me? So it's got to come. Why? Because you keep speaking it. Do you hear me? The more you speak it, it has to come. It's coming closer and closer and closer and closer because you are speaking the thing that you know that God has said. How many know God said something to you? How many know God spoke something to you? How many know that God wants to release something for you? Do you know it? If you know it, you got to speak it. Don't be afraid to speak it. Hear me. Don't be afraid to say it. Come on, somebody. And you got to say it how often? Daily. How many times a day? Over and over. See, because why? I got to be rooted in this thing. I got to be built up in it. I can't speak it sparingly and expect it to manifest. I got to speak it continually. Somebody say continually. I got to speak it in a space. It says, and as you have been what? Taught. See? As you have been what? Taught. You what? You walk in faith through teaching. See, if I'm going to be established in a space of faith, I have to continually be taught. I have to continue to have it down low. I have to continue keeping my ears what open to teaching so that it will transition me and perfect me and put me in a position for the fulfillment to come to pass. So you can't just be established in faith without, he says, as you have been taught, abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. See, look at this. I'm being taught something. At first, I got to be rooted. I got to be built up, right? Then I got to be established in the faith. Then he says, as you have been taught, are you willing to be taught? Let me not rush you yet. Are you willing to be taught? See? As you have been what? Jesus put those disciples in that predicament for a teaching moment. Do you hear me? The manifestation was, it wasn't just about the miracle. It was about him teaching them that there was no limitation. It was about him teaching them that you can transition any situation if you can see differently. He was said, I'm teaching you. It's not for, amen, you amen, just see the miracle, but he wants you to get the concept so that you can birth this thing for multiplications to happen over and over and over again. If you're taught a system and the system starts to work, how many know you can re-implement it? See, but if I don't know, I will, I will do it and then I won't even realize that that's what I did to get the manifestation. So he says, as you have been taught, because it's not enough to have faith, but you need teaching with your faith. Do y'all hear me today? He says, and then abounding therein with what? Thanksgiving. You got to do what? Abound in it. Abound, not just, oh Lord, thank you, here we go. No, abounding in a space with what? Thanksgiving. Be thankful for everything. Woo! How many of us need to go back and just tell God thank you right now? It's something to abound in thanksgiving. See, it's something to give God thanks to say, Lord, oh my God, I got this, I have that. Lord, I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful. We don't know how to be abound. We, we say thank you, but to abound in thanksgiving means our heart is transitioned into a space where we sometimes we just come to tears for no reason. Why? Because I'm just so thankful. I'm abounding in a space to say, Lord, you did this for me again. See, abounding. Not just thank you, Lord. 
abounding, meaning a heart of thanksgiving, a heart that the smallest things mean the most. When you abound in thanksgiving and somebody just come up and greet you, say, thank you so much for thinking of me. Ooh, I'm just so thankful. See, when you have about abundance of thanksgiving, it's how you view a thing. Come on. So everything means a lot. Hello? Everything means a lot. You can send me a text and say, I love your pastor. I say, oh my God, I'm so thankful. Yeah, a small thing can mean something so big. You got to abound in thanksgiving. That means look at everything and say, God, I see it. I'm so thankful. Do you hear me? When, when our tire blew out yesterday, we could have started saying, oh my goodness, the tire blew out. This is ridiculous. We, you know what I said? I said, Lord, I thank you. Because why? We were off the road. We wasn't, come on, wasn't no, we could have had a bad accident. Come on, somebody. I said, Lord, I thank you. Then I said, Lord, I thank you. We got the money. Lord, I thank you. There ain't even no struggle. Lord, I thank you that it's already somebody that's preparing the way. Come on. I started thanking God. I said, oh, I'm so grateful. So you got to have thanksgiving. You got to have a heart. The, uh, if I'm looking at it the wrong way, I'll be getting mad. Oh, this is ridiculous. Not a tire bus. We got to spend money. We got to See, that's that thankfulness. Do you hear what I'm saying? We got so thankful. We said, well, they going to get one. Give us two. Come on. And we can afford it. You got to understand there's a space you got to be in to say, Lord, I thank you even when something happened. I can see the grace and the mercy of God. I'm abound in thankfulness of every single thing you do. I'm hurting, but God, I thank you because the rest of my body is free. Come on. I, 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 I couldn't lift this arm, but God, I thank you. This part is all right. Lord, I, I know this part is hurting, but I'm thankful for the other part. You got to I learn how to abound in thanksgiving. Stop focusing on the problem and focus on being thankful unto God. Abound in thanksgiving. It'll change your atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It could have been worse. Thank you, Lord. You preserve me. Thank you, God. Stuff is manifesting. Thank you. Abound in thanksgiving. Change your viewpoint. Yes. Change it. Come on, tell somebody change it. Change it. Change my viewpoint. Change it. I'm not going to look at stuff bad anymore. I'm not going to look at stuff that's sad. I'm not going to start always speaking negative. I'm not going to always start tearing stuff down. I'm going to be thankful in everything. But we ought to give thanks in all things. For it's the will of God to give thanks. What? It's the will of God. And the will of God, that's power. He said, it's my will for you to be thankful. Not just thank me, but it's my will. That means if I'm being thankful, I'm directing myself more so that the fulfillment of what's supposed to happen manifests in my life. Why? Because it's his will. And he said, oh, you in my will being thankful. So I got to draw things to you. Why? Because you're in agreement with the will of God. There's a space, do you hear me today, that he's called us to function in. He says, listen, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Give me verse 8. Now he says this. And, and this is where I'm going to end today. I'm not going to preach long. He says this. He says, beware, lest what? Any man. Any man spoil you through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. I'm going to stop right there first. He says, beware. Basically, watch out. Now, I've given you the keys. You got to walk in me. You got to be built up. You got to be rooted. You got to be established in faith, and you got to abound in thanksgiving. I gave you the keys. This is how you become limitless. Walk in these spaces. Now he says, beware. Watch out. Prophet, give me NLT as well. Split the screen. Watch out. Lest any man spoil you. Look at this. Look at this. Lest any man, NLT say, capture you with empty philosophies. Unless they start cap capturing you, meaning taking you into captivity to change your mind from being rooted, built up, establishing the faith, and having Thanksgiving. Wow. He said, you got to what? Watch out for these kind of people. Don't let nobody start telling you their philosophy. Amen. Now, you know what? See, I think, uh-uh. Look what it says. And not only philosophies, I love the NLT, but it says, and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world. Wow. Nonsense. Do y'all hear me today? People will tell you nonsense. They'll start speaking foolishness. They'll bring you into captivity. They'll want, they don't want you to be built 
tough. They don't want you to be rooted. They don't want you to be transitioned. They don't want you to grow. They don't want you to elevate. They say, see, that's for them. You don't have to do all that. Right. Come on, somebody. Well, you see, that's no the prosperity thing. Or you know what? See, that's the that's the faith movement. And see, that's the this movement. Come on. People will start speaking high nonsense, foolishness to bring you into captivity. I, I'm here to tell you, it ain't happy being poor. Okay. Y'all don't want to talk. Yeah, that's true. Somebody ought to say, if you ain't happy being broke. High philosophies of high sound or empty philosophies of high sounding nonsense. Tell me you was happy broke. Y'all don't want to be real. Tell me you was happy broke. Ain't nobody happy broke. They don't want to say the truth. See? So somebody can what? Capture you with the empty philosophy with some nonsense. He said, no, no, no. You got to walk in me. Walk in my principles. Walk in my precepts. Be transitioned. He said, why? Because people will tell you stuff that don't make sense. Amen. And get you off course for the progression of where he wants to take you. And you'll become limited instead of limitless. You know how people transition into another space or another place in life? Because they start what? Knocking off the philosophies of what people told them. They start breaking down. When somebody said, oh, that's too high. You going to pay $10 for that? I sure am. It ain't too high for me. It might be too low high for you, but I'm in another space. Come on, somebody. you got to knock down people's nonsense. Okay. Do y'all hear me? That's why you got to watch your mouth. I taught you a couple weeks, weeks ago. That's why you got to watch your mouth. Because you can say something that can become a philosophy to somebody else. And then it'll hinder them from functioning the measure that they're supposed to operate in. And it can stop you and stop them. Do you hear me? That's why you got to be so careful what you say. Y'all hear me? Beware. Do you hear me today? Beware. You got to watch out all around you for people who will want to stop you from being rooted and built up and established in the realm of faith that he is calling you to walk in to become limitless. Everybody don't want to go. You hear what I say? Everybody don't want to go. That's why you got percentages of people in different classifications. Do you hear me? You have what? Percentages of people in classifications. Jesus said this. He said the poor will always be with you. That means there's always going to be people who want to be limited. Hear me. He already knew. Oh, it's always going to be a group. They don't want, they just want to stay there. He said, leave them where they are. They will always be here. There are always people who will be limited around you, but you don't have to take upon what they are releasing. He said, yeah, they'll always be here because that's the space they're in. But then he says also, what? He said, the poor and the rich meet together. Come on, but I'm the God of them all. He said, I'll be the God over all of you, but some of you just want to remain in a limited place when I'm trying to free you to a place of limit limitless. Y'all understand today? Mm -hmm. Men's philosophies will mess you up. Yes, They'll tell you what you cannot do, what you should not do, how you should not function. You got to be able to open yourself up. Hear what I'm saying? Now, yes, there are processes in God, and there may be spaces when you have to go through a, a process for God to bring something out of you. But at the end of the day, when you come out of that process, God will cause you to soar. Come on. Why? Because that process is to make sure that you're rooted and built up properly. Do you hear me? Because your root got to be right. Come on. Your fruit, your character, your life has to be in order. So he works through those processes to make sure that you're rooted and built up so that what? You can come to a space of growth and development. Development so that what you can advance to the next dimension. Look what he says. He says, any, lest any man spoil you through philosophies. Man-made theology. Man-made thought patterns. Man-made experiences. I'm talking to somebody. Let me tell you something. The, your experience is not the only experience. Can I help you with that? Nope. Your experience is not the only experience. So if that's true, 
that means that all of us can have experiences that can keep us in captivity and not know it. Yes. Why? Because you haven't experienced something else. So if I've only experienced one thing and now I'm saying it and I'm trying to help you and I haven't experienced multiple ways of the same thing, I'm limited. It becomes a philosophy. I'm trying to help you. So that's why it's important that you get connected to somebody who can see out of multiple eyes, multiple faces, the many facets of God. So why? You can advance. Why? So they won't give you just one slanted philosophy. People see out of multiple eyes when they have what? Been well versed. That's why I told you exposure is important. Growth comes through what? Exposure. It breaks you from being limited. So the less you are, if you, if you may be exposed in eating all kinds of food, but then you may be, uh, have a lack of exposure in culture. You may be exposed to uh, uh, finance, but then you have a lack of exposure in fashion. Come on, somebody. So that's why we have to get a balance to be able to what? To understand there is something that I can receive from God if I'm open to just beyond my own experience. Do you hear me? You got to open yourself up. That's why he said beware of people because somebody's going to tell you something and they only been in the ghetto. Somebody else may tell you something and they only been in the city. Somebody else going to tell you something they only been in the suburb. Somebody else going to tell you something they only, do you hear what I'm saying? They only been wealthy. Somebody else can tell you something they only been poor. Beware. That's why it's good to what? Be exposed to multiple ways or avenues so that you have something to say. That's why you got to be taught. See? But talk with somebody that's not going to teach you what? Their own philosophy and nonsense, but they're going to teach you something that's going to broaden you and advance you for growth. But a lot of people, because of their lack of exposure, come on somebody, I hate to tell you, your families, your friends, your connections, they're not exposed. So if, if this is all they know, this is what they're going to tell you based on what? The environment they're in. This is how they're going to teach you based on what? The environment they're in. So you have to be willing to get around somebody that's going to teach you and put you in a position to set you up to become limitless. I said, God, I thank you. Fight for the transition. Somebody said, I got to fight for it. Gotta fight. Look what he says. And then the same verse, it says, and not after the tradition of what? Men, but after what? The rudiments of the world, and not after what? Christ. Do you see this? So people will begin to teach you based on what? Their ability. You can leave it like it is, probably. They will begin to teach you based on their ability. Look what it says. It says, after what? The tradition of men. This is why we got so much stuff that's happening in the body of Christ because people just teach you tradition. Mm -hmm. And when you start breaking tradition off, people don't like it. Why? Because it's what they've been taught. But he said what? You got to break free from what? The traditions of men. To what? Grow and mature to become something that God wants you to become. Limitless. I heard something the other day and someone was saying, um, that the leader was was going to be sad because they were superseding them. I said, well, that's not a real leader. Right. Because a real leader always wants people to supersede them. A real leader always wants to see growth and manifestation. A real leader wants to see people duplicate or do double what they are doing. Amen. Because what? That's the evidence that they are what? A real leader. So if we get stuck with somebody who has a traditional mind, the traditional mind is to suppress people instead of release people. See, when you, when you get connected to a limitless possibility, then in a leadership sense, my ability to be able to what? Push you to a place where tradition is broken off of you and you soar to another dimension. He said, beware now of traditions. Stuff that's going to box you up and lock you down. Tradition holds you captive. Right. Hear me. Tradition puts a yoke on you. But tradition bounds you. Tradition what? Keeps you in captivity. He said beware of tradition. And people are in it and don't even know. People are stuck in it and don't even know. 
People are in a, in a form and don't even know. The word talks about a form of godliness, but there's no power in it. Why? Because you, you know the tradition of a thing, but there's no manifestation after the tradition. Come on. You, you know the forming of, oh, this is what we do now. This is how we do. This is how we do. But after that, there's no power. See? How do you know you locked the tradition when there's no power that's evident in your life? See? You're locked into a routine. That's traditions of men. You just know to go to church. See, that's a tradition. People say they know. You know, people say, I'm a part of my, you know, that's my grandma's, you know how that people say, <laughs> home church and all that. I, I never heard of that until I came so. That's my home church. They don't even go, but they, they say that's their home church. Home church. Okay, that's my family church, but you don't even go to it. Traditions of men. Do you hear what I'm saying? The, well, the pastor should counsel my grandma. Your grandma ain't never been here. But traditions of men, because I go, my grandma need count. Yeah, all come on. Traditions of men. We need, to, we need to break some of these traditions, philosophy. Beware of traditions. It's, it, it's going to ruffle your feathers because why? If you are used to all these traditions, well, this is how it was. This is how it was. Break all of that and be free in Christ. He said when you are in Christ, you are free and free indeed. He didn't bring you to be bound in tradition. He brought you to become limitless. He brought you to soar. He brought you what? To be able to be like an eagle. He brought you to go to dimensions that you didn't even think possible. Why? He said, I created you in my image. I didn't create you in tradition. I created you to be free. So you got to teach people what freedom looks like. Tell somebody, I'm going to teach them what freedom looks like. Come on, I'm going to show somebody what it means to be free in Christ. Wow. Look what it says. It says, and then after what? The rudiments of the world. So don't measure yourself by the world. Don't measure yourself by what you see the world doing. Measure yourself by what God wants you to do. See? Because people, why? They start telling you, well, the world is doing it like this. See? And sometimes as the body of Christ, we can get in trouble because we're looking at the world trying to duplicate what they're doing instead of looking at Christ and duplicating what he wants. And so the church will try to become a nightclub instead of, come on, instead of the church being free. Come on, y'all. Yeah, so you, you're going in there in this strobe life. You don't know whether to do the, the, the James Brown or to give God some prayer. Come on, you got to understand. After the rudiments of what? The world? And we think that's important. Christ is the same Christ yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if he is, he don't need a, a, a club atmosphere to draw people. Come on, somebody. He, his Holy Ghost has power, and it's eternal, and you can reach people with the lights on. Come on, somebody. That's a rudiment of the world. Turn off the lights and put a strong light so unsaved people can come. The Holy Ghost still works. All right. All right. I'm just being I'm just being real. Because that's the rudiments of the world. We can't pattern ourselves and get that's why he said beware. You gotta watch out for these things. Watch for it. Look for it. Be on alert for it. See it. Don't let people start what? Capturing you and doing stuff that's not in the will of God. Look what he says, and then he says, and not what? After Christ. So you got to make sure. That's why you got to be rooted. You got to be built up. Right? Back in that verse 6. You got to be rooted. You got to be built up. You got to be established in the faith. You got to be taught. And you got to abound in thanksgiving. If you do these things, you won't be able to be spoiled by anybody. If you stay in this space, you won't be able to be shifted off of the space that God will want you to be in. You'll be able to grow into the place that God wants you to grow in. And you'll be able to walk in him. See, you won't be altered. You'll keep fighting to become limitless. To be more and more like him. To walk in him. Not walk in. Not walking in yourself. So you got to fight you. <laughs> to walk in him. Because your DNA is not his. 
but he adopted you, so now you got to take upon it. Do you hear me today? So your original DNA is not his, right? But he adopted you. You got to understand the adoption process. And in, in his adoption process, he infuses us with his blood. He kind of had a little shot time. The normal adoption process, you take upon the name. But he said, it's not just you taking upon my name, but I'm going to infuse you with my blood, which will what? Bring you to a space where you can function and become limitless and move into what? Beyond barriers and borders that you ever thought possible. He got a little shot You got to believe. Somebody say believe. believe. I got to stand in agreement. Somebody say stand in agreement. For the fulfillment of what God has called forth in you. 1 Peter 5 and 10, and I'm, I'm ending with this. I'm ending with this. First Peter 5 and 10, it says, And after the God of all grace, who has called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, he will what? Make you perfect. Do you see this? He will establish, strengthen, and settle you. He cut the The NLT says that in his kindness, God called you to share his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So that after you have suffered a while, see the rooting and the being built up, that's your process where you're being, you're going through the suffering. But he says, after you have suffered a while, he's going to bring you into a place of limitless possibilities. What is he going to do? He said, I'm going to make you perfect. I'm going to establish, strengthen, and settle you. I'm going to put you in a positioning for the fulfillment can manifest so that which I want to do through you is settled. It's done. He got the other double shot I'm perfecting you today. He got the other double shot This teaching, this series, this thing that we're walking in is to perfect you into a space so that the fulfillment of what God wants to do. He said, yes, you have suffered. Some of you suffered a while. He said, okay, that's fine. But after the suffering, you got to understand. He says, after the suffering, he's crossing you over into a new space. He establishes you, strengthens you, and settles you. The NLT says that after you have suffered a little while, he will what? Restore. Come on, somebody. He will what? Support and what? Strengthen you. And he will place you on what? A firm foundation. Something that can't be broken. See, something that can't be destroyed ever again. When your foundation is solid, you ain't never going back down. Amen. See, he's trying to get you to a place where you what? You come to a place where, guess what? You'll never have to visit that again. Come on. God's moving us now into a dimension that what we once suffered and what we once went through, we ain't never going back there. Come on. We ain't never going through those struggles again. We're never going back in that space. He said, you got to understand, I'm putting you in a place of limitless but I'm making sure your foundation is so sure that you'll never have to go back to that no more. Do you hear me? Your life is changed forever. Hey! You don't never have to go back. That day, that space, that hour, that time, that season is over. Come on, somebody. You got to tell yourself it's over. You got to believe it. You got to receive it. You got to walk in it. You got to know I suffered already. Hey! I don't have to repeat that season. You got to make it up in your mind. Come on, Jontel. Make it up in your mind. I suffered already. My suffering season is over. It's the season now for limitless possibility. It's the season now for me to be established. It's a season now for restoration. It's a season now for me to be strengthened. It's a season now for me to be, be revitalized. It's a season now for joy. It's a season now for breakthrough. It's a season now for me to laugh. It's a season now for me to be happy. It's a season now. Come on, that I'm in for the limitless possibilities and breakthroughs to come forth. You got to understand. Hey! You got to understand where we are. You can cut that music. You got to understand where we are. It's a season. He cut to the old Shabbat. Of rejoicing. Your status has changed. You got to believe it. He cut to the You got to believe that thing. And you got to take hold of it. And you got to possess it. And you got to say, I'm not letting it go. No matter what, I ain't turning back. 
Because I'm, I'm in the season of restoration. He I'm in that season. Do you believe that? Believe the word of the Lord today. Know what season you're in. He And you got to speak to it. You got to prophesy and say, I'm not in a season of lack. I'm not in a season of struggle. I'm not in a season where the wilderness is. I am in the season of limitless possibilities. And I step in every day is another opportunity for me to have something happen. Come on, somebody. You got to believe it today. You got to believe it today. Hey, you got to believe it today. This is the season I'm in. You got to kick your old season out. You got to fight. See, if you don't fight with that old, kick it out of there. So you ain't coming back in here. You got to go. Can y'all hear me? If it try to creep, you got to say, uh-uh, uh-uh. No. Speak to your wallet. Speak to your mind. Yeah. Speak to your body. Yeah. Speak to your, come on somebody. Yeah. Speak to every area and say, no, that's not the season I'm in. That season is not welcome. Why? Because I'm in limitless possibilities. I'm in a space now. It can't nothing invade that space. It can't invade that space anymore. I refuse to allow it to come. Do y'all hear me today? You got to refuse your old, your old season. While you're watching online and while you're here in the building, I want you to just tell yourself, I refuse to accept my old season. Come on, I refuse to accept my old season. Stand all over the house for those of you that are here. Refuse your old season. Come on, you got to fight. So I refuse that. Uh-uh. There's no lack around me. There's no limitation around me. There's no struggle in me. I'm not wrestling. Come on. Refuse your old season. Do the past try to give you a flashback to make you go back to something? Come on. You got to say, that's my old season. And I'm fighting against it. When somebody from your past, I don't care if it's an old flame, an old man, somebody from your past, that's the old season. I, I left that season. Y'all hear me today? You got to say, I left that season. That ain't, that ain't even who I am no more, so ain't no use of you coming. That's the old season. Because the new season going to bring me somebody that's walking in limitless possibility. It ain't going to bring me nobody away from my past and they so low. The new season will push you into a place where they'll find you in your new space. Ain't nobody coming from the past. I'm prophesying right now. Let go of the past. They ain't coming back. Let them go and find your new man, your new person in your new season, in your new town, in your new time. Amen. I don't want nothing from the wilderness coming after me. That's right, man. I want something in the promise. Come on, somebody. You got to believe like that. You don't want no wilderness promise. Do that, do, that, do that even agree? Come on, wilderness promise. No. I want the promise of God that is yes and amen. And the promise is always in front of me because he always said, forget those things which are behind. So let go of that from the past. Let them go. Don't worry about it. Whether they friends, it might be family, it might be certain people that just they ain't going, y'all. Right. You gotta let them go. That's that was for the wilderness, but right now, going forward to Jesus, and it's somebody on this side yes, that's Lord. gonna connect to me on this side Lord. and see my value on this side. Lord, Come on, Lord, Lord. that other stuff got to go. I can't accept it because I'm in a limitless place, not a wilderness place. They gotta see you who you are now. See, you get that old joker from back here. I don't know why I feel this. See, they they back here. That's what they seen you be. That's how you were back here. You changing now. You up here, and they trying to come from way back there to where you are, and they ain't even qualified. They still about right here. You way up there, and they trying to say, "See, I remember when, baby. I don't remember nothing. What was your name again?" I'm trying to help somebody. That's what I just said. What was your name again? I'm trying to help somebody because they'll try to come back. Now you flowing and you all up here and the Lord moving and you going into your limitless and here comes somebody from the past trying to pull you back here. No, I'm going forward, honey. And whoever he got is in front. They ain't behind me. They're not behind. 
They're in front of you. You got to receive this today. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Because it'll have you going backwards instead of forward. It'll have you struggling and you ain't supposed to be struggling. It'll have your mind battling and you ain't supposed to be warring. It'll have you in a space that you're not supposed to be in. Hear me today. Go forward. What God has for you is in front of you, not behind you. It's in front of you, not behind you. You don't have to look back to get your promise. But you do have to look forward to get it. Because he said, press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Walk in him. Not backwards. In him. Going where? Forward. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise in the house. Come on, bless the Lord like you really mean. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you, your past is over. Come on, sing it. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, oh, oh. Say it one more time. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Hey. Today. Come on, give God some praise. We're moving forward in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word today, God. We decree and declare, Father, that, Lord God, everybody under the sound of my voice, those that are here and those that are watching online, Father, that this word will penetrate their hearts, that transformation and change will take place in their lives, God, that growth and development, God, will come forth out of their lives. God, I decree as they are rooted, God, and grounded in you and built up, God, walking in you, that there will be a manifestation of transformation and growth that will come forth for the fulfillment of your people in the name of Jesus. God, I decree and declare now, God, they will look for possibilities daily in the name of Jesus, God, that you will open up their minds, God, open up their hearts, God, open up their spirits, God, that transformation will come, God. I speak to their mind, God. I speak to their minds today, God. I speak to their minds, God. Oh, God, cause them to fight and contend for the faith, God. Contend for the thing that you have put within them, oh, God, to manifest, oh, God, limitless possibilities of growth and transformation and change in the matchless name of Jesus. God, I give you the glory for it, God. God, I give you the honor for it, God. God, we praise you in advance, God. God, we lift you on today, God, with expectation for manifestations, oh God. And God, we honor you for it in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare it so. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're watching us online, amen, we want to thank God for all of you that have watched us. If you'd like to sow a seed into the word of the Lord, amen, you can sow through Givelify, um, Prayer and Faith 2020 at gmail.com. You can also sow through, amen, PayPal at, amen, Prayer and Faith 2020 at gmail.com. We pray, amen, that you've been blessed by the word of the Lord today. If you want to sow directly into the word, you can also sow on Cash App. Hallelujah. You can do that through the dollar sign D-W-A-N-Y-J. That's dollar sign D-W-A-N-Y-J. We want to bless God for all of our viewers. Amen. And we know, amen, that God is doing something on your behalf. Listen, those of you that are watching, amen, the Spirit of the Lord wants to, amen, break open and do a work for you. Hallelujah. He wants to do a work for you. So I'm going to pray a special prayer for those of you that are online today. Father, I thank you. Lord, God, 
Father. There's somebody that may watch this broadcast, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, that you will touch them online. God, that you will do a work on their behalf in the name of Jesus. And God, I believe now, Father, that there's somebody that will run back to you, Father. There's somebody that even give their life to you, Father. There is somebody, hallelujah, who believes, oh God, in the word that has been spoken today, that by this word, their life will be changed forever. So, Father, I decree and declare that they will be transformed and changed in Jesus' name. I decree and declare it so. Amen and amen. God bless you is my prayer. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord continue, amen, to cause growth and transformation. If you want salvation, amen, please, amen, inbox us, amen, for further information and we will pray with you. If you want personal prayer, amen, inbox us and we will definitely pray with you. God bless you. Have an awesome day in the Lord. Come on, give some.